Well, I've just gotten a pretty big delivery, and I'm not exactly sure what's in it. It's either a brand new machine, or a long lost artifact that probably belongs in a museum somewhere. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty familiar red paint. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is 103 kilos of the finest machine to cast iron China has to offer. It's been a pretty long time since I've bought a machine from China, and one thing I don't miss is cleaning off the thick layer of anti-corrosion grease that they coat these things in. They put a lot less on than they used to, but it still is a pain. Wax and grease remover should do the trick, but I know I'm going to be finding this stuff in odd places for the next 5 months. With it moderately cleaned up, let's mount it to a workbench. This can't take that long. You join me about a week later. The mill is mounted and bolted to a steel frame bench. Turns out making the bench took a lot longer than I thought it would. I'd show you the weld job that I did, but I'm not a great stick welder, so just take my word and believe that they look beautiful. But enough of that, let's focus on what we're all here for. This is my new milling machine. More specifically, it's a Sieg 2.7L, the same brand as the lathe you're all probably familiar with. Just to give you a quick rundown on the specs, it's 750 by 620 by 880. It's fitted with the extra long table that's 700 by 160. The headstock travel is 290 millimeters, that's movement in the headstock, plus 700 millimeters of travel with the quill. The table travel is 500 by 190, and that effectively makes up the work area, and it's powered by a 750 watt brushed DC motor, and it has a Morse 3 taper spindle. The total cost that I paid for this was about 1500 Australian plus shipping. You also get the regular accessories, hex keys, several size wrenches, two T-slot nuts, an oiler bottle, and a C-wrench. And for what I paid, I'm pretty happy with what I got. Now a few of you might ask, why did I go and buy a mill, considering that I already have two really good lathes? And to answer that, I have three answers. Number one being, it's been close to four years since I last used a proper vertical mill, and I really want to brush up on my skills, hopefully learn a few new tricks, and have fun along the way. Unlike a lathe, I'm mostly self-taught when it comes to mill skills, so it's going to be great to learn some new skills. Number two, lathes and mills are similar, but they work using pretty much inverse principles, and as a result, they do produce, or at least specialise, in producing the opposite types of work. Lathes hold and spin a workpiece, and a tool is used to remove material. This allows you to make really accurate parts with a cylindrical profile. A mill, however, holds and spins the cutter and moves that into a stationary workpiece. This, coupled with the extra axis of movement, allows you to make really accurate square cuts. Now in the past I have said you can use a lathe as a mill, and I've done it several times. Simply chuck an end mill into the chuck and move it into the work and you effectively have a mini mill. A more permanent solution that other people have done would be to fix a vise to a vertical slide to give you that third axis of movement, but herein lies another issue. The work area is tiny. You can only cut from below the centre of the chuck to the bed, and that's only about 90 mils, and once you account for the vise, it's going to be smaller than that. You also only have about 75 mils of cross slide movement, and once you go further, the lead screw simply runs out. You might also ask about the mini mill attachment for my Sherline lathe. It's a great attachment that has served me well, but I still run into the cross slide travel issues, and most of my tooling won't fit into it. It's a pretty small mill, and it just doesn't have the capacity for larger end mills. That's not to say I no longer have any use for it, because it still has CNC capabilities, and that's something that is really invaluable in a workshop, and truth be told, I really enjoy working with G-code and CNC machines. 
And that brings us back to the big mill. It has a really large cutting area and I can mount full size vices on it and I can use really large end mills with it. Incidentally though, this is not the cheapest mill Sieg offers, but in my opinion, this mill offers the best value. For about $500 less, you can get the Sieg X2 or the X2L, and whilst I am sure those are very capable mills, I've seen a lot of people use them, the 2.7, in my opinion, is better in the long run, for two or three big reasons. Number one being, even with the extended bed fitted to the X2, the bed is only 500 mils long, and that gives you a cutting area of only about 300 mils long, which is a little small for my liking. The 2.7 has a cutting area, which is 20 centimeters wider, and I'm not saying I'll be using the full cutting area every time, but I do know running out of cutting area is a common complaint with the X2. The second big issue for me is that the X2 has a tilting column. It's held to the base using a bolt on the back of the column, and in theory it allows you to easily tilt the column and cut at an angle, but in practice this makes the head really difficult to tram in, i.e. getting the column perpendicular to the table. The 2.7 however has a solid column design which is bolted to the bed using four bolts. This offers a lot more rigidity and it's much easier to tram in. Finally, this mill has a much bigger motor. It's 750 watts versus 350 watts. Overall, I'm really impressed with the build quality, at least compared to my experience with the lathe. The slides feel really great and smooth with the next to no play in the gibbs. The surfaces are really nicely machined, and it was properly trammed in at the factory. Obviously, we have yet to see how it holds up long term, but so far I'm pretty impressed. Each slide is equipped with a lock, and my only real complaint here is the quill lock, which is just a hex bolt. I'd prefer it to have a handle, but that should be an easy fix. Surprisingly, the hand wheels are actually made from metal, and each of them has settable dials, and the action is really smooth. Unlike the mini lathe though, the pitch of the lead screw is 2 mils rather than 1 mil, so for every rotation of the hand wheel, the table will advance 2 millimeters. Interestingly though, the longitudinal hand wheel has a spring-loaded dog clutch, meaning you need to push the hand wheel into the clutch to engage it. I was a little bit confused at first, but I eventually realized that this is done, so in the event of you getting an auto feed, the hand wheel won't spin when you're auto feeding, which is a pretty smart solution. Now on every machine tool, backlash is going to be unavoidable, but here it's actually pretty low out of the box. However, I will need to get my head around accounting for backlash in both directions, something that you don't usually have to do on a lathe. On a lathe you just back it out, and then back it forwards to get rid of the backlash. Here, it's going to be unavoidable. I'm going to have to account for the backlash when going in both directions. I could skirt this by getting a DRO, and eventually I will do that, but first I want to learn the basics and then get a DRO. Speaking of DROs, the quill actually has one, so when you do set the tool height, what you'll do is you'll use the column to set the general height and then lock it and then use the fine adjustment and the quill to select your depth of cut. I didn't mention it earlier, but as standard, this mill will come with a B16 Jacobs chuck. The Jacobs chuck is really good for holding twist drills and drilling holes, but it's probably a last resort for holding end mills. I mean, you can do it, I've seen it done, but the run out won't be amazing, and the jaws are just too hard to properly hold onto the hardened end mill. So to remove it, we need to remove the drawbar. The drawbar being what distinguishes this from being a glorified drill press. I mean, this is a super accurate and rigid drill press, but it is so much more than that. The drawbar effectively holds the chuck in place. This is a Morse 3 taper tool, and a Morse 3 taper is really good at holding compressive loads, but any side loading is going to cause it to simply pop out. That's why you can't use a drill press as a mill just by adding one of those sliding tables. The chuck will just pop out the second you get a side load. 
Now this mill has a Morse 3 taper, but I am aware that they do sell these with R8 tapers, and they are probably the preferred taper over Morse 3 for mills, but since my lathe has a Morse 3 spindle taper, I'd rather have my tooling be interchangeable than needing to use one of those adapter sleeves. So to hold my end mills, I'm going to be using a collet set. This one here is an ER32 collet set and chuck. I've ordered some extra end mills, but they have yet to arrive. So for this test, I'm going to be using a smaller quarter inch end mill. In fact, a fair amount of my tooling is yet to arrive. The vise that I've mounted is just an end of financial year freebie that came with the mill. It's good enough for low tolerance parts, but I'm definitely going to be getting a better one soon. One hidden cost of milling, at least compared to using a lathe, is actually the cost of tooling. An end mill is a much more complex cutting tool, at least compared to a single point lathe tool that you typically grind yourself. And unless you are super skilled at sharpening or have a proper grinding jig, sharpening end mills is going to be a big ask. So expect the cost of tooling to be a fair amount greater than that of using a lathe. One thing you will need to supply yourself is threaded rod and flange nuts in order to bolt the equipment to the table. Machines it like butter. That's a pretty decent cut. It cut it, but I know I need to brush up on my feeds and speeds. It wasn't happy with it. And that does it for my first impressions for the mill. So far I am very impressed and I know it has a lot more to give and I have a lot more to learn. Expect to see this machine in a lot more future videos because I have a lot planned for it. Hope you enjoyed this, thank you very much for watching, see you next time.